Yes, people. How's it going? It's our last day here in Podgorica in Montenegro, and it's indeed a very beautiful day, as always. And we are going to be heading to the airport shortly. Now, we've got two options how to get to the airport. Our first option is by taxi, which is how we got here. And a taxi will cost us roughly 15 euros. That's how much it cost us to get here at least. If we got on from the street, we would try and negotiate a price of at least 15 euros. But in this case, we're actually gonna go and get a train. And the reason why we're gonna do that is because a first class train ticket here costs two euros each. I've gotta see what this is like for myself. Secondly, the train station at the airport, where we're going to, is absolutely tiny. It's almost so small that you cannot believe it. So we want to check it out and see it for ourselves. And we also want to see what the trains are like in Montenegro as well. Because we spoke a lot about the infrastructure and the transportation in Montenegro and how it needs to be improved. But we haven't quite seen the trains yet, so it'll be a good opportunity for us to check that out and confirm whether it's as bad as we think it is or whether it's better than we expected. So let's get out there have a look, and whilst we're doing that, have one last look at Podgorica before we head back to the sunny old UK. Let's go. All right, so heading over now to the station. It's about a 20 minute walk from our apartment, and uh, yeah, it's been quite an interesting trip really, hasn't it? We've, uh, so far, we've been here for, what, a week? About five days. About five days, isn't that five days? We've been to two countries and three cities. So it's been a pretty cool experience. And uh, we've, we've seen quite a lot already. <laughs> but um, one thing we're a little bit concerned about is, so in the UK or most countries, you'll have platforms numbered and clear directions where to go. And in other countries you won't. And if you've ever seen our series from well, older videos from Poland, you'll know that we almost got stranded in a town called Oswiecim because the station had no information about where things were. And that station comparatively was quite modern. So this station will probably contain very little information about where our platform is going to be and stuff. At least that's what we're imagining. So we're leaving like an hour earlier than we really need to purely so we don't have to, uh, you know, well purely so we're not made late by uh, potentially missing out on the platform, but let's go and have a look. I almost forgot to mention, I almost literally got run over yesterday, so I was going past the, uh, well it's like a, it's like a, I guess in the UK we'd call it a zebra crossing, but it works slightly differently here, like yeah. you just kind of just go for it really. <laughs> I don't know if you caught that, but I'm not cutting it out, but she almost went... I must say though, in her defence, look at the floors. Terrible. Almost tripped over a few times as well. Um, oh, day. Yeah, you're alright. Yeah. But anyway, right, so we'll, um, we're crossing one of these zebra crossings and uh, the... So it was on the right way. It had like the green man on. And so it was. It's like, yeah, okay, we can walk. So we started walking and then this car it came speeding around the corner so it's strange how it works in this part of the world so it won't a zebra crossing sorry it's just a normal traffic light so in the uk when the man turns green on the traffic symbol all cars stop from both sides and the pedestrians go forward whereas in this part of the world and indeed most of europe that we visited so far the cars will continue going so you'll cross the road and some of the cars depending on what direction can continue to cross now when we were crossing, when we were crossing, we uh, had this car speeding and literally millimeters away from us had to hard brake. And I was like, dude, it's a green man. Crazy. All right, so we're not far from the station now. So if you're interested, the station or the train station is actually near the bus station literally next door to it so if you've been to Podgorica bus station before you'll be able to find the train station we've taken this walk so many times now that we've actually memorized it <laughs> we don't need maps to get us there but we do need maps to work out where the train station actually is because it's tucked away somewhere we've uh, been past here a few times but it doesn't really stand out as a 
standout building or anything. It's probably just a inconspicuous, you know, little building somewhere. Or perhaps we're just too stupid to notice it. We'll find out shortly. But uh, yeah, we're certainly going to miss Montenegro. It's been one of our more favourite countries that we visited, uh, along with Albania. Albania was wonderful as well. We took a three hour, well it ended up being four hours actually because uh, we had the border patrol to go through. Um, so four hour journey into Albania and Albania was a really cool country, really really nice. Though if you've seen our previous videos you know that I didn't particularly like that bus station. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's get to this train station and see what it's all about. Hello buddy. So there's the uh, Podgorica autobus, Stanitsa, I think that's how you the bus station. And we'll, uh, we'll do a little POV walk to the, uh, to the train station. So you know how to find it from here. You've got a nice little cafe here as well, if you want to stop for a drink. And uh, some toilets. Be aware though, as of 2024, toilets here cost 40 cents. So I uh, do have some change if you want to use the toilets. There's a guy down there, you pay him, and then he uh, actually used the toilet. And he was a lovely guy, very friendly. And uh, I believe the entrance to the train station is just uh, through this little underpass thing here. Let's have a look. So you've got taxis here. So if worst comes to worst, and for some reason we miss our train, we have got a taxi. But uh, we've got tourist information as well. That is for the bus station. And uh, how long have we got now, Sam? All right, so now the real track challenge begins where we have to try and work out which train we need to the airport. So uh, there's an information center there. Perfect. I'm just wondering which train station we need or which train we need to take to the airport. Uh, the next train is 755. Okay. Which platform number? Pedon? Oh, we don't know yet. You have to ask information. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. Fala. Dali Plichate Engleski. Uh, uh, airport Peron. Okay, okay, follow. <laughs> okay, so that's going to be a bit, a bit more of a challenge than I expected because uh, I'm not entirely sure what she just said there. I do know some local language, but only the basic travel phrases. Uh, but I do see a few people with suitcases and stuff, so I guess I could just follow them. Well, yeah, but I think for now, I roughly know what the train looks like, so it kind of looks like this one over here, actually. But uh, the train arrives at 7.55. If at 8 p.m., 8 p.m., 8 a.m., we're not on our train, then we're just going to go and get a taxi. But I really hope we don't have to do that because I really want to see what the trains are like here. So. Let's go. So as you can see here, the train we need is the 7.55, which goes to Bar. Uh, and as you can just about make out, the first stop is the Aerodrome. Aerodrome. And Tommy's just bought a ticket from here. So I thought that the tickets, you purchase them from the train themselves with a conductor. And I think you can do it that way. But you can also purchase them here from the station as well. Right, here we go. <laughs> On the train. Just confirmed with uh, one of the workers that this is the right train. Oh, what a nightmare. So thankfully I found the uh, the driver, asked him if he spoke English. He said yes. Sorry for a bit puffed out, I just had to sprint. <laughs> and uh, he was like, yeah, yeah, this is, this is the airport. So we've done it. Got a ticket right here. Two euros 40 in total. So, uh, if you were to make that out too. And uh, yeah, let's see what this ride's like. All right, so I do a little, little walk around of the train. 
and see what it's like. It's actually really modern. Really nice modern train. Got some toilets here, I believe. I don't know, I think there's some in there. Oh, there's not. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna be using that anytime soon, though. Oh, lovely. Oh, I leave something for too long, but yeah, this uh, adds some good, uh, good styles on it. That's, uh, that's the driver's place. I don't want to be going in there unless uh, they let me drive the train. That'd be quite a YouTube experience, wouldn't it, people? But uh, yeah, it's quite small, really, but it does do the job. Okay, so the train's on route now, and uh, I think all in all, the journey takes probably seven to ten minutes from Podgorica to the airport. But uh, yeah. So far, so good. This is what it looks like, or what the train station looks like. And uh, you can see some of the trains over here. Very, uh, very old school. Lots of cool graffiti. Contrary to popular belief, I'm a fan of graffiti. I do like it if it's done well and done properly. Um, so, yeah. What are your thoughts, Sam? What are your thoughts? On the train. <laughs> it's a train. <laughs> Is it better or worse than you expected? These are good. It's a lot more modern than I was expecting actually. So obviously given that the train station itself, like the you know, finding the platform and stuff was difficult as I expected it to be. The train is actually really, really modern, really, really well kept and very clean. Unlike the trains that we have in the UK, which uh, some of them aren't great, but look at those views. Not bad. Here we go. Jobs are good in. Arrived and there's the train. Look how cool that is. There's so much sunlight. Blimey. Blinding. What a cool train. Alright people, so here we go. Made it. This is the area as you can see and this is the airport station. So as I told you it's crazy that is literally the station airport so let's go and have a little look inside so that's aerodrome i think that's what it means and that's it that's this is what you got <laughs> so i don't know what more i can say really it's got some nice hills and stuff in the background not entirely sure where to cross where are people crossing? Just over the tracks? Yeah. Okay, we're crossing over the tracks, people. So, ugh, blimey. <laughs> Not often crossed over a track. Ugh. And as you can see, the area is uh, in need of some renovation, but this is, this, is, this is the airport station. So the actual airport from here, how long is it, Tam? How far does it take? It's an 18 minute walk from here. You can actually recognise it from the underpass up here. And uh, how lovely is that, eh? So, Podgorica, you gotta think, guys. This is the first impression people get when they see your airport station. It's not a good representation because you're a beautiful city. Montenegro is a beautiful country. And this is your capital city, and that's your railway station. You know, it's probably one of the worst I've ever seen. One of them that I have seen just as bad but it's one of the worst. And let's see how the rest of this trip goes. All right, so en route to the airport now. Pretty much the tactic we're taking is just follow other people, but we have got Google Maps open. So thoughts on the journey? Well, first and foremost, I have to be completely honest, information in the train, just as we expected, was terrible. No information and <clears throat> the, just like, hey, we don't know what platform it is. No idea, go and ask Information Centre. Hey, Information Centre, what's the platform? You know, she might have said what the platform was to us. 
but even given the fact she was shrugging and I know how to count in uh, in the local language if she had said peron jeden dva tri chetri pets I would have known what she was talking about I would have heard a number and known but she didn't so I'm assuming what she was saying was I don't know <laughs> no idea so uh information in the train station not good now in terms of the actual train itself the train is actually really nice modern clean the toilet wasn't very nice it looked like someone had freshly used it and it looked like they had missed everywhere all over the room but the actual you know the actual train itself was good i quite liked the design of the train uh but the station uh airport I saw it in a few videos and pictures, but when you actually physically get here and see it for yourself, well, <laughs> it leaves a lot to be desired, it must be said. Now, I'm not being, I don't want to be ultra critical. We paid, what, one euro 20 cents each. <clears throat> it was about a 10 minute trip. And that's a good, that's a good deal, I would say. Now we just saved ourselves 13 euros potentially by doing this. And we've got a nice 18 minute walk which means we can burn off some of the calories we've been accumulated over this trip from all those lovely chivapis that we've been eating <laughs> but uh yeah what's your thoughts on the uh station the information center stuff like that the trip i'm just so glad that we've got google translate yeah google translate was useful what did you think of the uh what do you call it the how easy it was to find platform and stuff well, as soon as I obviously put it into like English to Croatian for her to read, she she just pointed at train. She was train like that. So. Ah, right. Okay. So she must have been like it's okay. So just to let you know, Croatian is the nearest common language. In Google Translate, there is no Montenegrin. So if you wish to communicate, your next best language is Croatian. So use that to communicate. Uh, because it's essentially the same language anyway. But uh, yeah, we're taking a stroll now. Nice mountains in the background. Uh, Montenegro is a very mountainous country. And by the time we get to the airport, we'll have about two hours. And we like to have about two hours to wait. So uh, yeah, that's how it works. If you do the reverse journey, I actually don't think you can buy an airport ticket at that station, because there's no one there to buy off. So if you wanted to make this journey backwards, what you'd have to do is jump on the train itself and then buy it from the conductor. And uh, again, as long as you've got a few euros in change, you should be able to do that just fine. Now, would I recommend doing it? 100%. The taxi prices here are pretty fair, but if you want to save your money for a good beer, With some nice food then the train will take you pretty much to the heart of the city and then in our case it was about a 20 minute walk away from our apartment we were staying in so close enough to get to all the local amenities now i will warn you if you're taking this journey the opposite way around so if you're going from the airport to the center of Podgorica, as you're walking down this road here you may get a lot of people trying to offer you taxi rides. So you may get a lot of taxis coming down here and saying, hey, do you want a taxi? Hey, taxi, taxi. People stopping. I remember seeing a YouTube video recently where this taxi driver literally followed them all the way down here over to the bridge over there and was literally parked at the bridge watching what they were doing and said to them, oh, this station's closed. COVID's closed it down, which in the end turned out to be false. So they will try any tactic to get you in the cab. So do be aware of that. Hold your ground, be steadfast, take the walk up here. Bear in mind, you are walking against the main road. Not just that, you don't see these views. And you won't get to see these views either. You'll miss out on them views. But anyway, 
just want to say thank you for watching we hope it's been informative useful interesting and all that stuff if you take this trip yourself we hope it's been useful to you and if it has do let us know how it went for you if you've taken this trip before and you have any information or advice for people please let us know down in the comments and if you're a local and you have any thoughts or views on what we've experienced today i want to share some insight then please do we always value information and knowledge from the locals and that's very very useful to us so please do comment and let us know but anyway thank you very much people we're not walking on the main road so we've got to be extra cautious but we hope you have a great day and we'll catch you very very soon take care people see you later